So, hi, uh, my name is Mita Mertinovic. I am a UC Berkeley PhD student uh, working on a project called Clear Library. Um, I will shortly present my background, uh, why I'm interested in this, and then um, I didn't really thought that this would be so big event when I was holding the session, so it was more of an idea of like discussion about this. But I will present some of my ideas, our approaches, what we are doing, and then invite your feedback to this. Um, so what the library is, uh, it's a very new project, it's more research project, uh, but uh, it's a real project. So we are trying to build, a, uh, improve how uh, everybody's discussing scientific papers uh, on any academic literature, in fact. So how we are doing that, we are providing a web platform where you can import your PDFs and read it in real time with others at the same time. So if you want to creatively read something, you can do that together. Uh, with others, ask questions, get answers, uh, highlight important parts of the paper, um, um, say, hey, I don't understand this part, uh, can somebody help me? And the idea is, because we are all reading again and again, we are redoing the work again and again of finding mistakes, finding insights in the in paper. So, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to build an like, open layer, collaborative layer for knowledge on top of papers of all these. Uh, annotations of all these insights people have, all these questions and so on. So even if somebody comes to a closed access paper, the knowledge is still open because uh, it is the layer which is built by the community and not uh, wrote by publisher. Uh, so the idea is also that it's not open, only open access which matters, but also accessibility of papers. So if, if you have open access papers, it's really hard for uh, somebody maybe to understand the publication. So the idea is we help around the paper with additional information or community Understand. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm just explaining to you a bit why, why this session. So uh, when we started this project, we said, oh, that's okay, we have publications, we can import them, uh, make this discussion platform and so on. But then the question is, which publications? Where we, do we know, uh, you know where they are, uh, which metadata they have, which, what it is, the PDF somebody imported and so on. Because we want that the things are, you know, discoverable, searchable, that people can find them, find the research and so on. And that, in, in fact, presented as a problem. There is no such data. We don't have an open data set of, 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 of which publications. Um, we don't have an open data set with, with, which would link us to, to the, there is the PDF of, of every publication, uh, every academic publication made in the world. Uh, we, there is no, no, no such things. Um, we need metadata. We need, you know, author, who is the author, who are authors, who is, uh, what's the title, the license of publication is also important. Even now when we are moving to open access, you know, the question is, what, can you reuse the paper, can you register with the paper or not? So all this data is missing. So it is split into many different, um, okay, sorry, and, and um, also we want tagging, we want to know what is the paper about and so on, and that can be also collaborative. So, uh, there are some sources of data split around. So you can use in the layers of Terra, they provide something like this. Crossref is good uh, to get at least basic data. Uh, you can crawl around the web, you can start to find. Google Score figure this pretty well. But sadly, the data is not available. <laughs> uh, you know, so <laughs> what we can do? Um, um, and the idea is once you have this data, you, what you want is, in fact, it's not just to get data from publishers, because it's probably it's one version of data. What you want is that we as a community could augment this data, link to other things. For example, you have a paper, and the metadata can also be in some way linked to the source code on GitHub, linked to the data on uh, Figshare, or, or, and so on. So, augmenting by the community, adding links between publications, all this is something which is hardly missing. We don't yet have it. Uh, correcting the data, <laughs> it, you won't believe, but data provided by publishers is not always correct. <laughs> Often it's not correct. You want to fix it. So we don't have that. Um, so in fact, what we are missing is here is really a long uh, is process of, of how we are handling data. So here we are talking about data, bibliographic data, uh, metadata, uh, URLs to links to different other sources from full text and so on, how we approach it. Uh, we could see an example of this in Music Brains. Music Brains is doing a similar thing for music. In music you have a very similar thing. You have CDs, albums, publishers, labels, and so on. Very similar thing, and what they're doing there, collaborative, it's a collaborative, uh, it's a website for collaborative editing of this data. They are, they are yeah, typing out of the CD labels into the um, uh, website, the, 
data. And this, why is important? This data is freely available. Because it's freely available, openly available, anybody can use it. Many, many applications, many, many media, media players are then using this data to display when you're playing a song or CD, what is the song about, what is the CD about, and so on. And, and what we can learn from that, which is not important just to have a tool to do that, it is important to have a community of people creating this data. And, and again, what we're missing is such a community, such a space to be. Uh, it is independent, it's independent from different publishers. The publishers might provide data, they might not provide data, but they still operate. They operate independently from them. Uh, and it's a, a tool, it's a website where you can go and, and work uh, very easily. Um, it is not tabular data. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is probably hard to present it as tabular data, sadly. But in fact, there are things like Beep, JSON, which was made at Open Knowledge uh, Foundation, uh, which is a JSON format uh, schema proposal for how to um, store bibliographic data. You could also use JSON MD. I think that's much better format for, for what we would need for, for such a data set. Um, so what we are proposing, or what, what we saw in the library, and we, we are planning to make it as part of the library because we saw that there is nothing yet, and please correct me if this, I would not, rather not implement it ourselves, but I, I really couldn't find this. Um, so um, a site where you can merge multiple sources, because you can find publishers, you can find the you can find on the right, which of each of them have a separate uh, smaller subset of, of, of data you would like, uh, and then you put on top of this community data configuration. So it means that people will be able to propose uh, uh, changes, and, and more experienced users will then be able to confirm changes, and, and we will build this collection there. So, so um, that's, that's uh, to where we got in our uh, line of thought, um, line of uh, thinking, is that, yeah, that there is something like this missing, and let's make it part of the library, and um, the question here is really like, um, um, so, and I'm open this more to discussion now, like what, do you think that that's a reasonable endeavor? Do we need that? Do we have maybe already a data set which is hidden? I did find some data set like this on some Russian servers. Uh, the sad <laughs> is that you don't, have, you don't know the licensing. So you can say that data is, is maybe not even licensed or copyrightable, but still, they are, um, uh, you would like to have a, Trace of how data came in, who changed it, and how changed the you know, the quality of data, and, and so on. So yeah, so that's a, a, a more of now um, an opening for discussion. So if you have any comments, please raise your hand, um, um, ask anything, or add, or so on. Good. Okay. I'm good. Let's go for it. Oh, questions? Can we do questions? You can do questions, you can do comments. It's, I think it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. It's framework and having a discussion. It's really great. It's, I think it's fantastic to have a very interactive session. Cool. So, um, first question is, how, this, how does this compare to uh, sites that recently popped up, like PubSphere, which do post-publication review? Yeah, so, um, um, the main sites which are, which would need this data in, in underlying. So, uh, the issue with, because we don't have, um, common data, clean data, uh, many of these sites have to do it from scratch again and again. Yeah. And, and because then they invest so much work into this. So you also have like, you know, academia, the, the, they do my, um, my science work mm -hmm. and so on, which create a lot of data. They have nice data research, but they don't provide it because they add so much effort into it. And again, it's often just one version of it. You know, they, make, they make it one, they clean it, and then they leave it. You don't really have this collaborative, um, you know, um, fixing of data, which is who, who in fact, the easiest the, the person to find mistakes is the, are the readers. They go and see, oh, this paper doesn't, this, this PDF, PDF doesn't match this data and so on. So without have, having people, the readers in the loop, I cannot believe that the data would be uh, clean in the long term. So yeah, the websites, so many of those websites um, need, um, need such good data and yeah, they're like trying to figure out, but it's really like the main thing for us when we start the project would be there would be some repository, we could just download everything and have not metadata and then build new tools out of that. Not that we because like we do, okay, we don't even know what we are dealing with, we need data first, and then we can build tools. Our, for us, the most interesting thing is how to improve for discussion about data. It's not metadata. That's like necessity, but not mm -hmm. what we want to build. So, um, I guess there's a bunch of pieces here. So, 
What, one of your goals is to have a list of all of the metadata describing all published academic papers. Yes. And did I also understand that you would also like to have the full text of uh, all the papers? A link to the full text. So knowing where it is, knowing know where you can find, you know, and so on. So what often you can get, um, you can get the link to the publisher's website. Oh, the, but that's not the full text. You, you then have to crawl through that site to the full text and find it, and so often it's, it's locked and so on. The issue here would be find a link to the full text, and they can, like, lock it down if they want. But the main point is to have a direct link so that you know what you can try to open or not try to open. And how, currently, you always have different websites of different publishers, then you can, you know, you, you have to program uh, this that way. And again, uh, every project that has to do it again and again. And so uh, my question then is, this is not an accident that this is a balkanized ecosystem. Mm -hmm. That this is intentional control by uh, different publishers that own, well, believe they own, yeah. <laughs> the scientific content. And uh, the approach that you uh, indicated, Music Brains, that's a similar approach that Mendeley took, but Mendeley was uh, um, an IPO play, essentially. Mendeley uh, pulled all kinds of data and conversations into one place and then got bought by a private publisher. And similarly, uh, the CD database, which became Grace Notes, um, all, uh, all kinds of people contributed in public information to the CD database, and then it went private and turned into Grace Notes. So how, how, how do you imagine a model that keeps this in the public domain, but is also sustainable? I disagree. I think that's an amazing example of what and where should we learn from previous mistakes and improve it. So, um, uh, I think that the licensing here is the, the, the one important part and, and the software itself should be free software open source. So that even if you take and close the data and decide now we change the, the community can fork, they can go away, create their own instance and say, you know, whatever, you just try to say they will move to somewhere else. And if, if you, they can move that because they can, they, they can take data and they can take the software, then you get this, uh, I would say, interesting power struggle, which is often in, in open source projects, where because the forking is easy, in fact nobody wants to fork it because they, they, they will speed the community and so on. So uh, they then you know take care, extra care that you know they, they adhere to the, what the community would like. So if the community don't like to be sold, then fork what they want. So forking I think is the important um, pressure and control mechanism here. So you can but you have to be able to fork both the code, the website, the data, everything. Do you use a common identifier for the authors, uh, like org ID yes. or bias? Yeah, so, uh, it is, uh, so what we've been using because um, is all of them. This, that, that, that's the point of open, uh, open data set, is that you, you have to have all of them because some authors are in some, some authors are somewhere else, some are in middle, so you create your, your own and so on. But you know, data is cheap in this way, like you know, space storage is cheap, so we can, we can reconstruct just all of them. Yeah, but that's a good question. You know, so the, the question when you start dealing with this is, you know, authors in the papers, their main data is often different spelled names and so on, so you have to find which author is the correct one person and so on. Um, so there are sites like Orchid, um, uh, which are trying to resolve this by you know, uh, inviting researchers to, to subscribe and get unique ID, similar to OEID, uh, OID for, for, for papers themselves. I just want to get back to two previous questions. Thousand places on the web that do something similar. Why should I yeah. support this one? For me, it's really an important question. Of either you are so great that everyone loves this, yeah. and sooner or later this grows really big, or you think about how do you work with others. Mm -hmm. And I think most realistically, um, um, I think that's a really tricky question because there are other places that do similar things. Everybody puts own perspective, but that's mm -hmm. Can you just, by the way, this would be great. I think you would be really grateful, but just can people name specifically? I mean, I've also been active. We've done stuff in this <laughs> decade as well, but I even had a go at doing this kind of project. Could just people name? It would be really useful because I think people are really eager to collaborate. What other sites exactly. are producing consolidated data sets of papers? So there's Open Library would be the obvious one for books. 
right? But for papers, they're pretty weak. But I mean, that might be something yeah. kind of, who would say the groups which have the open data sets? So for example, Google, I know very explicitly, are not open. In fact, they bought data, lots of metadata, they paid money for it, um, and they don't tend to give out their metadata. And remember, we're talking more about the papers here, the content is not relevant. But could, could you do say, if you know places that you recommend, because I think we do give them average. Or so you mentioned three of the okay, go, go. one's pocket, one's yeah. nice bar, it's not just paper, but uh, publication, and one's nice to send a CC0 license, the data set, which you can go out and out. Number two is Crossref, they have built a really nice API in the last few months, which gives you all kinds of metadata. And number three, for a five minute was Crossref's license? Uh, they, are, they, are, I them, uh, they said that because it's metadata, it's not copyrightable, so it's uh, public domain. Yeah, all right, okay. okay. And the third one for biomedical, where I come from, is PubMed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. sure you know. Yeah. And you have our high program, but it's not for open access. It's open yeah. So uh, I agree. So that, that's a good source. But uh, none of them, maybe I think that Orchid is the only one, uh, had in the layer where people can co create and edit and, and, and build upon that and fix the things, if I'm not mistaken. So Orchid allows you to suggest a thing, or like you can have uh, improvements to the, the reality data, but uh, the others are like, frozen, given by somebody, and, and you can just take it or leave it. Uh, and and th this loop I'm missing, these are documents. We need also the next step. So, uh, you know, that the first step. If you take the existing data sets, merge them together, and then say, oh, okay, now we have this, but we have to clean it up and improve it. But what's your, the incentive for the community? Because when you're a scientist, you work towards publishing the paper once, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> the, 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 that's that's where the community comes into play. So uh, what 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 uh, what that's, I would say what's even motivation behind the library is that we are reading again and again the papers. Different researchers are reading the same paper again and again. They do work when they read it. Once they read, they more or less don't care anymore about it. Like they invented some notes for themselves, published a bit of uh, their new paper based on that, but they they, they, they just go uh, and continue. But Doing that process, if they find a mistake, they can submit this mistake into the system. Yeah, that's, that's very difficult. So we try to do that for journal clubs. Mm -hmm. We have 20 people discussing a paper, and we're trying to just write the blog. Yeah. So it's not a big word, and yeah. this already was too much. Okay, we should talk about it. I think Phil Ivory addressed this issue. Okay. So if I'm not asked, if I have more questions. Uh, yes, okay. I'm also going to editorialize just for one moment. One for a moment, we use the group for My experience of this is. Boiling the ocean problem, you know, um, if you could pick one vertical, so your issue is to get traction. It's great, yeah. but you have you have yeah. a problem of make, getting it big enough, people contributing. Picking one area, like I don't know, I was in economics, we started out doing like you know just repeated gain, experimental repeated gains. If you can get one community using what you're doing, as opposed to trying to do all of the scientific literature, you're much more likely to kind of get going. Does anyone have any thoughts on that one? There are no particular communities that are especially interested or excited. So a question, this, and this lady here. Do you want to, please yeah. go. Um, so just something I realized and what I was thinking clear about, what is the, the status of the metadata? Like you said, uh, Crossref? Yes. Take the position that it's metadata, so it's not copyrightable. Yes. But I get the impression that you can't just go to the Alphabet website. And no, you can't. No. And that Crossref's position is, is pretty debated. So if that's great Crossref for saying that, and mm -hmm. I would be into, I mean, one of that may be God knows where Crossref get their data from. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your issue. So absolutely, it's not quite controversial. That's why you can't just go and scrape, scrape Google Scholar. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so Crossref is getting um, they, they're getting data directly from publishers. They, they, the publisher, when they want to publish their work, uh, they need uh, to sign the DOI number to the uh, to the work. So they go to Crossref, they provide the metadata, and they get the DOI number back to identify the work. So that's how they are getting the the data. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's very good source in Canada because it's even different from publishers. But yeah, it's a good question of, uh, and it, for what compatible in Europe is different than in the US. So that's also the question. Thank you very much. If you, have, if you have anything more, please come to me. I will be at the conference and right. here. Let's have space.